very good evening and thanking you for joining us tonight on Times Television. My name is Brian Banda with this week's edition of Times Exclusive. The program comes to you under the auspices of Rainbow Pens. They say blood is thicker than water. Reality tells us that even family lets one down sometimes. We still have to face the harsh weather as individuals. We say Rainbow Weather Shield paint is thicker than blood. The paint endures the hottest of days, the heaviest of rains, the dustiest of seasons, and the windiest of nights. Not even the toughest molds can stand this hero of a paint. Rainbow Weather Shield, family and true friend that sees no weather. Rainbow Paints, peace of mind, part of the deal. My guest tonight is engineer Gerard Konje, who is the CEO for National Construction Industry Council. Engineer Konje, thank you very much for joining us uh, tonight in Times Exclusive. Thank you very much. V very briefly, uh, who is engineer Gerard Konje? Engineer Gerard Konje was born on 17th uh, July. 1970. He is uh, um, uh, a married man, married to Martha Konje, and uh, with uh, uh, four children. Okay. Two boys and two girls. Okay. Um, as the title suggests, yeah. I am an engineer. Okay. Which means um, a civil engineer, particularly, and. Um, uh, a civil engineer, uh, for those who might not be aware what a civil engineer does, basically we work in the construction industry by profession. Now, prior to becoming CEO for National Construction Industry Council, what have you done before? Um, my journey has been quite a, a long. A long one, yeah? A, a long one. Mm. I started as a site engineer okay. uh, when I just graduated from Polytechnic with a degree in civil engineering. I joined a contractor, worked for five years with a contractor. After that, I joined a consultant supervising construction work okay. for another uh, two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And then I joined another consultant um, uh, as a trainer, okay. where I was training contractors, consultants, and all those people that are uh, concerned uh, with the construction industry. So it would be uh, facilitating training for managing directors of construction firms, uh, those people that uh, work in the construction industry, and related stakeholders. After that, uh, I was um, uh, engaged by the National Construction Industry Council yeah. to continue facilitating that training, now from the NCIC. Okay. Um, Some time later, when there was a vacancy of a director's position, I applied, attended interviews, and I was successful. Mm -hmm. So I have worked first as a technical director for National Construction Industry Council, the position that later changed to regulatory and enforcement director for the construction industry council of okay. Malawi. And uh, last year on 1st um, uh, uh, April, I was appointed as CEO for National Construction Industry Council after emerging successful. So there were interviews? Yes. There, there were, were interviews. interviews? Yeah, there were interviews. No, not just appointed? No, no, no. no. There were... Uh, aggressive <laughs> interviews <laughs> and from the time i was interviewed to the time i was appointed yeah. it was about uh, uh, about seven months oh i see uh, yeah the national construction industry council what does it do 
You mm. said it's a regulator now? Yes. Okay. National Construction Industry Council was actually established by an act of parliament okay. for the regulation, promotion, and development of the construction industry in Malawi. So, so it is a, a statutory cooperation? It's a statutory cooperation. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, its mandate can be summarized in those three keywords, regulation, promotion, and development. And in terms of regulation, we actually register contractors, consultants, and construction material suppliers. We also facilitate capacity building interventions, like training. Remember I said I first joined as a trainer. Yes. Actually, that's the uh, angle. I joined NCIC from. Okay. So we facilitate training. We also look at creating an enabling environment for the development as well as operation of the industry. We also monitor how players in the industry operate their ethical conduct and we also exercise discipline. Did you just say ethical conduct? Yes, ethical conduct. Do you think you're doing enough in checking that ethical conduct? Actually, in as far as the, in, uh, the construction industry is concerned? We have uh, done quite enough, but there is still a lot to be done. Because first of all, we developed uh, codes of ethics. These codes of ethics are in three parts. There's a code of ethics for contractors, a code of ethics for consultants, and another code of ethics that govern, governs everybody that is engaged in the construction business, whether you are a client or a player in the industry. So these conducts, the code of, codes of conduct, stipulate expected behavior of the players in the industry. As it can be envisaged, mm -hmm. there are a number of violations. Yeah. And some of those violations, the ones that we have picked, we actually take these people through a disciplinary process and we discipline them. We either suspend them or completely deregister them and ban them from operating in the construction industry. Perhaps you have seen some of the press releases informing the general public that mm. uh, so and so has been disciplined, so and so has been deregistered. That we actually do. We also monitor the uh, different sites to see the compliance um, of uh, the players to various regulations. For example, in the construction of roads sector, you see that a, a road has been broken or damaged, probably after one year or two of completion. Yes. What happens? And okay. where are you when those things happen as a regulator? Thank you very much, Brian. You know, um, the strength of a road and the capacity of the road is a factor of many aspects. Okay. Now, when you determine the strength of a road, it first of all depends on the design itself. What did you design? What did the client request to be done? I see. Did you request for a Toyota Corolla okay. or a limousine? I see. So the design itself, before you start talking about uh, uh, whether it's one year or two years, yeah. when we are designing a road, we determine the lifespan of that particular road. Okay. Say, for example, 20 years. Okay. It means it has to have certain characteristics. Okay. In terms of the thickness of the road base, the thickness of the surface, and the material used. Mm -hmm. And that has an implication on the budget. I see. If you design a road that is supposed to take 20 years and is supposed to have a certain thickness. Okay. And that thickness is achieved professionally and without compromise. You are bound to have a road that will last the 20 years before it starts failing. But if 
in your design, you have a limitation of resources. Instead of a surface for argument's sake of 50 millimeters, you have yeah. put a surface of 25 millimeters. To the general public, it's still a tired road. I see. And immediately it's a tired road, it will attract more traffic. Yeah. But if the surface is compromised because of the budget, it will fail within a year. Now, for us as a regulator, mm -hmm. before we start uh, making judgments and pointing figures, yeah. fingers, yeah. first of all, we do an audit okay. of that particular project. To say, okay, what was the design? What were the parameters? Okay. Have those parameters been fulfilled on site? If they haven't been fulfilled, who is in the wrong? What happened? And then the disciplinary measures come afterwards. It is possible for a client to pay for a 50 millimeter surface road mm -hmm. and the contractor do 20 millimeter. It is possible if there is some unethical practices I see. on the site. Okay. So a client might have paid for 50 millimeters yeah. and then a contractor does 25 millimeters. Yeah. But on the value chain, there are several players. There is a client on one side. There is a consultant who is supposed to supervise the contractor I see. on the other side. And then there is the contractor himself. And normally in conventional contracts, you don't pay until you have assessed what has been done that it complies to the specifications. So which means before the client can pay, the contractor will verify I have done the job you wanted me to do. Yeah. The consultant will come to check whether all parameters have been fulfilled. The client also is at liberty to check to say, oh, is what I am is being delivered, mm. what I ordered before the payment is done. And where are you in all those processes? Are you at the very end or at the very beginning as National uh, Construction Industry Council? Unfortunately, as yeah. National Construction Industry Council, yeah. we are nowhere in that particular contractual arrangement. Are you sure? We are nowhere in that contractual arrangement. And yet you are a regulator? We are a regulator, but we are What not. are you regulating now? We are, no, we are nowhere. What are you regulating? You know, those are some of the weaknesses yeah. of the uh, legal framework at the moment. For your information, the NCI Act is under review okay. as we are speaking. Okay. Because as NCIC, we believe we should be the regulator of the whole construction. Including industry. contracts. Exactly. Including con contracts. Exactly. Yeah. We have to be a regulator of the whole construction industry so that we are able to have the necessary uh, power and authority to guide things in the industry. But the way the, the, the act is at the moment is that uh, it has given us power over the members that we register. I see. So we can discipline them. We can deregister them. But if an implementing entity, an agency, yeah. has, is the one that has compromised the delivery of uh, infrastructure, our hands are tied. We can't give them discipline. We can't reprimand them. Because the legal framework has not provided for that. So the review itself is supposed to cover those particular gaps. So once the review is done, uh, it means some of those will be able to. But currently, what then we can do as a council, yeah. because we don't want just to sit. Okay. That's why we have developed uh, what we call the Malawi Infrastructure Delivery Management Standards. Okay. And these standards now stipulate to yeah. say, how should we conceive infrastructure projects because some projects fail at conception yeah before you procure it's already designed as a failure mm. whether knowingly or unknowingly because you could already see indicators and some of them fail at design okay and some of them 
fellow at procurement you yeah. are doing the procurement yeah the entity you have procured right before you even begin a project you already those of us who are technical yeah will already see that um, this project is a failure i'll give you, a, you an example mm -hmm. you know we have uh, procurement procedures that stipulate you should go for lowest evaluated bidder yeah now procurement of goods groceries is very different from procurement of construction i see the reason is if i'm procuring a diary even if i just say a diary i will definitely have a diary yeah because it's manufactured at the factory yeah in a controlled environment yeah what remains is for it to be delivered in a construction the delivery process is actually the construction process okay. the manufacturing process yeah. is the construction process which I can see. take five years i see and you can have completely a different thing yeah at the end yeah of the day even when you say okay i want a three bedroom the house you can have a three bedroom the house that is worth 100 million kwacha you can have a three bedroom the house that is worth 10 million kwacha yeah but you have completely different products yeah so what we are saying is we want to give guidance to say when it comes to conception of infrastructure project projects this is the standard make sure this this is done when it comes to procurement this is standard let us evaluate and see is this entity that we are awarding a contract to do they have the capacity to deliver this project the amount they are charging is it realistic if it's too low, you already know, you will not be able to deliver mm. this project. So if you are involved in every stage, you can be able to advise. Eh, but, eh. but my next question is, if you are not in the loop, yes. then who is in charge? <laughs> in as far as contracts are concerned? In, in, as, PPDA? in, in as far as contracts are concerned, yeah. PPDA is the regulator. Okay. And then the implementing entities that are implementing the agencies, various agencies, then they are in charge of the implementation. Like itself. what? Like, like which agencies? For example, roads authority. Okay. They would be looking at the delivery of uh, 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 road infrastructure. Okay. okay. They will be looking at that. And so they, they, they are entities yeah. uh, like those that are directly uh, responsible for that. But what I was saying earlier on is that uh, as a regulator, we will need to have the necessary legal uh, capacity, the framework yeah. that is enabling us to also check to say, okay, roads authority, in terms of infrastructure delivery, yeah. are you doing the right things? City councils, for example, you know, we have been asked questions as NCIC to say, why is the stadium where it is? Mm -hmm. And some have asked to say, ah, why is it that uh, this area was supposed to have eight story structures? Yeah. Why do we only have two story structures? Mm. Others have asked to say, look, when you are driving into the country, you are flying into the country, the structures that you see, some of them look like matchboxes. Yeah. Where is the creativity? Mm. Where is the creativity? And actually people laugh at us. Exactly. A friend we, from, mm. from England yeah. once asked whether, we uh, wondered whether he was landing in a bush or not, landing at, at, at Camus International Airport. Yes, yeah. but, 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 but look, for me, um, it's an aspect of mindset. Okay. I will surprise you, Brian. Do you know that we have Maravia that have done amazing things yeah. in this world? But not in Malawi. Of course, some yeah. in Malawi, yeah. but most of them in are the... doing those things mm. outside this country, mm. which means we have capacity. And I challenge, as an engineer myself, I actually challenge to say, in Malawi we have enough capacity to implement any type of project that we are doing in Malawi. We can develop this country to the levels of New York and other cities? We can develop this country significantly. International standards? International standards. And, you know, look at the projects that we are doing currently. I don't see any complicated projects yeah. that a Moravian engineer can fail to do, that a Moravian architect can fail to do, that a Moravian surveyor can fail to do.
there isn't. This dual carriage ways mm -hmm. can be done by Malawian contractors. Actually, Malawian contra some Malawian contractors have done better quality jobs than some foreign contractors yeah. in the country. Want me to give examples? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, no, give, give. Yeah. Well, for, I, I can mention because there are obvious yeah. projects. Yeah. Look at the Kalonga Songwe Road. Have you traveled through that? Road? No, not, not recently. Not, I haven't been to that site. For some there time. are some aspects that you can literally see something better would have happened here. Yeah. Have you seen the road from, from Siku Transport cutting through Area 47 mm -hmm. going to ABC? Mm -hmm. It was done by a Marian contractor. You take that road, put it side by side with the Karonga Songwe road, yeah. and compare. Now, the Malawian did a better job. The Malawian did a better job. Yeah. It's over five years now. Mm. You won't see any potholes. That's that, right. That, yeah. that, that road. It did a better job. Which means we have the capacity. And, you know, one time I was just interested to, to find out, say, what have Malayans done outside mm. this country? I was amazed. You mentioned London. Yeah. I was amazed. Somebody sent me a list of the jobs. A Malawian sent me a list of the jobs he has done in UK, in the UK. Heathrow Airport, he worked on that project. In Malawian. U University of Wales, he worked on that project. Manchester Airport, he worked on that project. There is a development of estates, mm -hmm. buildings, mm -hmm. he worked on those projects. And you are talking about hundred million US, uh, hundred million pounds values, hundred million pounds, 250 million pounds, uh, 60 million pounds. He has done those projects in the UK. Talk of South Africa. Several of my classmates are in South Africa, mm -hmm. are in Namibia, doing excellent lots. Why, yeah. why can't it be done here? Right. What, what, what are the hindrances? Yeah. So for me, one, I said it's the mindset. Okay. Sometimes we have this illusion that foreign, feel, foreign things from other countries mm. are better. That's an illusion. That's right. It's an illusion, yeah. It's an illusion. Mm. And sometimes we think if somebody is coming from another country, they come here, we respect them more mm. than our own. Maybe it's an aspect of a prophet who has no honor. Yeah, in his I, but for me, yeah. we need to create an enabling environment in this country, mm -hmm. develop our own capacity. That's right. And development of our own capacity will require commitment to invest in our own. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes when I look at... Uh, what happens or what has been happening over the years mm. in this country, it bleeds my heart. Yeah. We have had challenges. If my child is not performing well in school, mm -hmm. I don't start paying for my neighbor's child because the neighbor's child is doing better That's right. than my child. That's right, yeah. I make sure I invest in my child That's so right. that he can catch up. That's right, yeah. Now, in this country, you look at how projects are designed, have been designed for over a long time. Mm. Sometimes it's not friendly okay. to ourselves. We are not friendly to ourselves. We are not friendly to ourselves. I see. We punish we, each other. We, we would rather support a foreigner Yeah than supporting ourselves. But I can assure you, this country, in terms of infrastructure, it's very easy to develop. Okay. Let's give an example of the road infrastructure. We have one main road, which I consider as a spine. Yeah. Because Malawi is narrow. Yeah, that's right. It is. So from Monsanje to Chitipa, I would consider that as the spine. Assuming we decide as a country mm. to say, look, let's invest in this spine. Juala is the whole stretch mm. from Sanj to Chitipa. Chitipa. Yeah. It's doable. It can be done? It can be done 
within three to five years, the dualization is complete. Now, let me surprise you. Yeah. From this spine mm -hmm. to any district yeah. in the country, yeah. how many kilometers is it? You discover the farthest is Mchiji and Salim. Okay. Which is 100 kilometers this side, 100 kilometers this side. Yeah. The rest are 20, yeah. 30, yeah. 40, top of Nchisi, Doha, Deza, uh, Balaka. Mm. Uh, Pretty close. Uh, uh, Balaka, yeah. Rumpi, yeah. Uh, Karonga, Nkatabe, Chitipa. Um, you can go down. Chikwawa, yeah. Nsanje. Uh, they are very close to the spine. They are very close to yeah. the spine. Yeah. And these spines are less than 50 kilometers, apart from... Yeah, the, this, you mean the roads? The, the, yes, the, yeah. the roads. Yeah. Yeah. These roads are 50 kilometers. Can we have a commitment to say, let's open up the country? And that is possible. We can do it. Let's, let's take a short break. Yes. I'll be back with you. Quite an interesting conversation uh, we are having uh, tonight in Jinea Konje. I'll be with you uh, in a moment. Thank you so much. In case you're just joining us, this is Times Exclusive, airing on Times Network. My name is Brian Banda. I'm joined by Engineer Gerard Konje, uh, Chief Executive Officer for National Construction Industry Council. We'll take a short break. We'll be back in 60 seconds. How often do you wash your favorite clothes? 52 times a year? How long do you wear them before they fade away? Three, four years? Imagine a paint with washability capabilities of up to 10,000 scrubs during its life. Imagine a paint that maintains its luster for over seven years. Imagine a paint with a velvet finish and water resistance. Stop imagining, because Rainbow Acrylic Sheen does it all and beyond. An all-time hero for interior and exterior finishing that brings smiles to thousands of families and contractors. Rainbow Paints. Peace of mind. Part of the deal. This is Times exclusive, airing on Times Network. I'm joined by engineer Gerard Konje, is the CEO for National Construction Industry Council. Uh, welcome back to the other part of our discussion. Thank you uh, very tonight. much, Brian. You, you talked about how easy it is to do an M1 road from Sanjay to Chitipa, with feeder roads taking to different uh, districts. Why are we not doing it? Actually, there are, there are several factors. Number one is basically the thought of it. Okay. <laughs> Somebody has to think about it yeah. and conceive it. That's number one. Number two yeah. is because when we conceive a big idea, we think we should do it at a goal. I see. And because of that fear, yeah. we don't start. I see. But every journey starts with a step. So what is important is to start. What is Whether we'll do it a way, one kilometer a year, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And for information, it's very easy for us as a country to do 100 kilometers of a road in a year. Yeah. We can do 100 kilometers in a year. It's possible. If you study the cost of roads and the like, you will see that um, that stretch is manageable within the resources that we have. Now, if we can do 100 kilometers yeah. from, from um, Nsanje to, to Chitipa, mm -hmm. how many kilometers is it? From here to Blanda is 300. Yeah. From here to Mzuzu is 300. Yeah. From Mzuzu to Karonga is about 200. Yeah. So, if we start working on this, you don't have to do it 
in one year. Mm. That stretch you can actually prioritize to say which stretch is the busiest. Okay. That has heavy traffic. Okay. Concentrate on that for a start. Yeah. And make sure the standards you are using are standards that will take you another 40 years to come back to that route. I see. Like Not the standards that after a year you need to come back. Okay. Or after three years you need to come back. Yeah. Because then you are being wasteful. That's but, the, these are the roads that Kamuz left us. We, we are still using them. Yes. But then, yeah. now that you have talked about uh, the roads that we are still using, yeah. there is another aspect that actually, when we are doing the assessment of the damages through the cyclone, we came across. Okay. It is the state of maintenance of our public infrastructure. We are not maintaining them. We are not maintaining. But every year we put money in the budget for maintenance. Where, where is that money going, uh, Engineer Conge? I think that money is not enough. And the nature of maintenance that happens okay. is not what I'm talking about. I see. I'll give you an example. You have a vehicle, Brian. Yes. Every 5,000 kilometers, what do you do with it? I do save, for full service. Do you wait until, until it's broken no, down for no, you to service? No, no. That's preventative maintenance. And these cars these days, they actually tell you that your maintenance is ready. Exactly. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, look at our infrastructure. Buildings, roads, any infrastructure, even your personal house. Mm -hmm. You need to have a schedule to say, for my house, every five years I will be painting it. Yeah. Don't wait until it's so dirty for you to paint. Mm. Because when it's so dirty, you need to scrap off the paint. Yeah. And restart and, the yeah, process. Right. It will become it, It's expensive, expensive yeah. But if you maintain it consistently, you increase the lifespan of that particular building. Similar to our roads. Those roads, we don't need to wait until they start developing protocols. What's, what's happening to the, 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 the new roads in Lilongwe? It's taking so long to see the pace. Um, you are the regulator. Yeah, we are, we, we, are, we, are the, we are the regulator. Maybe on but, the paper. But remember, yeah. no, no, no. Not only on the paper. Even yeah, because you sound like you don't know what is happening. It, it, no, 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 you no. Put no, the blame no. on PPDA. You, no, said, you said not us, but PPDA. No, 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 no. Yeah, I have, I haven't spoken yet on the roads. Okay. At the pace of the roads. Okay. <laughs> now, yeah, we hire a regulator. Yeah. The others are implementers. Okay. Right. Yeah. Now, look at the, look at the roads. What is happening on the roads? You can see some pace has started happening now. Yeah, but since the launching day, not much has been done. Okay. We could have achieved more. Uh, uh, um, it's debatable. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I am an engineer. Okay. There are some processes I anticipate that they will happen. Okay. Perhaps we would have done better than we have done. Yeah. Right? I think that's, but that's the, fair. The, 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 there are also certain elements. Um, during the rains... There are some things you can't do on a road. Mm. But there are also other things you can do. Being an engineer during the rains, perhaps you can concentrate on concrete structures. I see. Which uh, perform better yeah. when they are done in wet, okay. uh, wet season. Okay. So the planning aspect is another aspect that has to be looked That's into. Right. But at the same time, different companies have different strategies. You have seen this other road. They were doing the, uh, the the drainage. Yeah. They were doing the drainage yeah. when the, the roadways, so there was nothing happening yeah. on the roadways. They were doing the drainage, the bridges and the like. That's a form of progress. Okay. Okay. But it really depends on how they have structured that. I also have the same feeling that as implementers, yeah. they would have done better. Let's quickly talk about um, corruption in the construction industry. Are you aware of how big this vice is in the con construction industry? And what are you doing about it? Yes, um, I am aware from two perspectives. Yes. The actual that is happening as well as the perception. Now, why... There are two perspectives? Yeah, two perspectives. Okay. Okay, it's both pers perspectives. Okay. Now, the challenge that we have in the construction industry is that the industry is safe by nature is a complicated industry. Yeah, it is. And as a result, it is easy to hide 
unethical practices. I see. It is very easy. It's also prone to corruption. Because even in the context of the volume of money that passes through the industry is quite huge. Yeah. So if you are talking of a project of 10 billion kwacha, of 60 billion kwacha, of 100 billion These are big kwacha, monies, yeah. It's big monies. Yeah. And it's very easy to hide information. I see. That is the reason why if you are not technically qualified in the industry, yeah. it's also difficult to pick those elements. I see. So even the, the Minister of Transport and Public Works and Infrastructure yes. should be someone who really knows what is going on. That is very, very important. Because it is very easy to miss it. It's very easy to miss it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I only gave you an example of 50 millimeters against yeah, 25 millimeters. Yeah, yeah. Because to a lay person, the moment there is tar there, yeah, it's says, okay. Ah, the it's, road is yeah, good, it's okay. the riding yeah. is nice. Especially when it's not bumpy. And, it's not bumpy, yeah. everything, it's completed, yeah. it's handed over. Everybody says, yeah, this, this is nice. But for me, if there is that deviation, I know. You can see from afar whether it's 25 or, or 50? You cannot see from afar. Okay. You have to do a test. I see. To, 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 to determine that. Yeah. You have to do a test. Now, what, once you do that test, you are able to know, say, oh, no. Actually, we are anticipating 40 years life of this, this particular road. But with this, it will only last 15 years. How, how come they are sometimes the same company? winning tenders for these kinds of infrastructure associated with different governments. Mm -hmm. MCP would have, you know, its own companies that deal with them. Mm -hmm. DPP, we would see there are also specific companies that associate with that, you know, regime. Mm -hmm. What happens? Um, it's, it, the, your question is a bit interesting. Yes. But uh, let me tackle it from the perspective of situations where the same companies win projects. Yes. Because although you have specified to say MCP, DPP and the like, yeah. there are also some companies that are common. Yeah. The same companies they with are all operating the, uh, yeah. with, the, with, the, with a different government. Yeah. They are still operating with a different government yeah. and so on yeah. and so forth. So for me, from a technical perspective, the first thing is our procurement system itself. Okay. Our procurement system, and if a company satisfies those particular elements, mm -hmm. they are deemed to, to be successful. Okay. But I know from our colleagues, our counterparts, and the like, they have specific procurement strategies. We have heard of kickbacks uh -huh. in the construction industry. Yes. You are an engineer. Yes. You are wet on the site. You have been yes. a supervisor. Yes. Are you aware of this animal called kickbacks? I am aware. You are aware? Yes, I'm okay. aware. I, I have worked on site. Yeah, that's, that, that's why I'm asking. I have, I have worked as a supervisor <laughs> yes. on projects. Yes. And there have been attempts, especially when they know you are going to discipline them. I see. There have been attempts where they they would want to influence you. So, what I actually um, say, you can't compromise and uncompromise later. Okay. So, some of the things, whereas we are talking about the budget and the like, some of the poor quality comes from an ethical conduct. I see. When somebody somewhere has been compromised. Okay. Because once you are compromised, you can't be filmed. Who is the compromiser in this, in this, in this case? It can be anybody in the value chain. <laughs> Everybody, anybody in the value chain? Anybody in okay. the value chain. Okay, I it see. Can, it can be anybody in the value okay. chain. Okay, I see. It can be the contractor, yeah. it can be the consultant, yeah. it can be the, the, the client or yeah. the representative of a client. Yeah. So it can be anybody in the value chain. Yeah. That's why... We need people of integrity. That's right, yeah. Manning mm. these institutions. Yeah. We need people of integrity. 
managing infrastructure delivery. Are you yourself a man of integrity? You cannot talk about integrity uh, when you don't know it. Are you yourself a man of integrity? You, you tell me. Engineer, you sound like a man of integrity. 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 You know, the, the, the issue is, yes. I don't want to beat my own drum. Yeah. But the issue is, I told you to say, I can't compromise and think I will uncompromise later. Mm. So there are certain things you have to stand firm. Okay. You have to draw a line. Yeah. And for your information, in this country, we have a lot of people yeah. of integrity. Yeah, I hear so. We have them. Mm. And uh, some of them are undiscovered. Yeah. I told you developing this country is possible. It's possible. I hear there is a lot of money in this country. Not only money. Yeah. The resources are here, number yeah. one. Yeah. The skills are here. The skills are also here. And uh, why do I know we have the capacity to develop this country? It will only take everyone in his allotted responsibility yeah. doing the right thing. Mm. So if the construction industry starts doing the right thing, mm. Mm. you know we can also fix the economy of this country. President, the late President Bingo had the, some standards in as far as the construction industry is concerned. Mm -hmm. Three floors and up. Let's build going up. Today, people are just building willy-nilly. Where have the standards gone, Engineer Coach? And what, what went wrong? We could have picked from where Bingu had left. We could have had high-rising structures in this country. Actually, you can even go further. I can you go further. I could have picked where Kamuzo left. Yeah, I could have probably, yes. I could have picked where. We, yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah. Can, we can go further. Yeah, yeah. For me, there are several aspects. When you want to do something, mm. you have to be determined. Yeah. When you want to do something, there are forces that would oppose you. Yeah. And these forces can even include personal interests. That's right, yeah. In the matter. Yeah. You know, there are there are several good things that our leaders have done. Mm. But sometimes we expect too much. Yeah, we do. From our leaders. Mm. I cannot avoid because I come from a Christian background. Please proceed. And you are at liberty to say anything. If you go to Bible history, yeah. you will find kings and people that supported the kings. Yeah. Joseph. Yeah. Had to interpret the dream mm -hmm. of a king. That's right. And stipulated what needed to be done. That's right, yeah. The only responsibility of the king was to assign Joseph. That's right. To do it. That's right. And he instructed mm -hmm. the whole country, mm -hmm. please follow Whatever he does. This is the king. What uh, the king is yeah. telling this guy, the, what this person is doing. Yeah. Do that. And the whole country was saved. Yeah. Issues of uh, taxes, mm -hmm. withholding tax, are uh, holding back the local industry. Mabukata mm -hmm. is worried mm -hmm. of these, these taxes. What are you doing about it? Yeah, um, and the, these, these taxes, can you explain how they are done? Wholesale or, or at every stage? Okay, in, in, in tax, maybe the principle of, uh, of uh, withholding tax. Yeah. I'm not an expert in that area. Okay. Uh, in construction engineering, I'm an expert. Okay. But my uh, little understanding about the subject matter yeah. withholding tax is an advanced tax. Okay. It's like it's supposed to be part and parcel of income tax. They are worried that it's, it's, it's being increased. 
Yeah, I know it, it has moved from 4% to 10% yeah. in the, the, the just approved, yeah. approved, approved budget. Yeah. But then my take on that one, it's an advanced task, tax. Yeah. Uh, and my take is that that is supposed to be aligned with the anticipated profit margins. Mm. So that whatever is deducted is at least equitable, equated to the 30% or 40% corporate tax, depending on what the rate is. So if that percentage is much higher yeah. than that one, then it's basically digging into resources that are supposed to be invested back on construction. Now, you, you said you have members uh, of, of, of the council. Yes. And they pay registration fees? Yes. Are you intending to increase the fees? Um, of course, eventually the fees will be increased. Okay. Uh, but and how much are we talking about? But, but not this year. Okay, not this it, year? It, yeah, it, it, actually depends on the, it actually depends on the, uh, the category in which, in which they are. Yeah. So as of now, the fees for most of the, uh, the, the categories has not increased. But they are for, for, for consultants, they support, they, there is a proposal for increase. For foreign films, there is a proposal for increase, and those in the unlimited category. But that has not been implemented yet. Is there a deliberate policy within government and you as a regulator to give a chance to the local construction industry? Yes, there, there is a deliberate policy to do that. Okay. Uh, there are actually a number of initiatives. But we still see foreign construction yes. firms here. Yes, we still and see. And they are most of the time favored. Are they favored? Yes, they are. Are they favored? Yes, they are. Okay. Yeah. Right. Now, um, one, there is a deliberate policy to actually uh, ensure that Malawian films have access to these job opportunities. Now, you may be aware that we have uh, uh, subcontracting and joint venture requirements, which is stipulated that when a foreign film comes to Malawi, they can only operate in Malawi in partnership with Malawian films. Yeah. That's one initiative that is there. There is also that order, the, the MSME mm. order, mm. that says 60, 40, 60 for Malawian and the like. That is an attempt by government to uh, uh, give advantage to Malawian films. Having said that, as NCIC, we will need to uh, facilitate a review of certain procedures so that that benefit is meaningful. Yeah. Because we have seen in any compliance yeah. or manipulation of that law to still um, uh, uh, to, to advantage, mm -hmm. the, for example, the foreign films. So the manipulation happens with the players themselves. Yeah. Yeah. They can manipulate. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in terms of uh, uh, joint ventures and subcontracting, a film might decide to subcontract to a Malawian film yeah. components that are least profitable. Okay. So they will still subcontract, yeah. but they will select components mm -hmm. that are still are, I, are not I, very I profitable. Want to, I want us to talk very quickly about the environment. Yes. What are you doing to make sure that uh, whilst construction is happening, the environment is also protected? Yeah, as the NCIC, we developed an environmental management strategy for the construction industry, yeah. which mm -hmm. stipulates what needs to be done okay. in terms of the design, planning, and that, particularly targeting the element of environment in, as well as sustainability. Yeah. So we are looking at how we utilize our resources. How do we uh, clear the bush, for example, when you have been allocated, assuming you were ever allocated a, uh, a virgin plot mm -hmm. where there are trees and mm -hmm. the like. Yeah. Now, the practice has been you are going to your plot for the first time. Mm -hmm. I have to show it's my plot. You clear all the bushes. Mm -hmm. But did you need to clear all the bushes? No. You needed to select where 
to leave the, uh, the trees. That's there. right. So that's a practice. Yeah. So we have in in that strategy we are entrenching those elements, mm -hmm. as well as in terms of looking at the uh, um, uh, plantation of trees, how you treat uh, gravel pits, yeah. how you you design your houses to be energy efficient. Yeah. All those elements are within that particular strategy. What now what, with yeah. the with the the recent uh, uh, cyclones that have been happening? Yes, we need to be even more sensitive in terms of design of the resilient mm -hmm. structures. Mm -hmm. While as we make sure our infrastructure is maintained at a consistent pace, we also need to design with features that will be able to absorb those shocks. Mm -hmm. And it may not be possible to completely. Yeah have a foolproof design yeah. but we incorporate features so that even in cases where a building has to collapse yeah it gives pre warning okay we can design those features in I it see. gives pre warning it can so, be done here yes it can by be Malawians? Done. yes i see i can do it okay any architect can do it okay because we rent that okay so we can do that so that in case the building has to collapse it will give enough warning yeah. to all the occupants to vacate so that we don't lose life. Unfortunately, so, time is not on our side. Uh, what kind of complaints do you get from the construction industry? There are a variety uh, uh, types of complaints. There are they are numerous. So are numerous. Would, yeah, they are numerous. We would get complaints about late payment, for mm. example, delayed yeah. payments, and then payments. We would get those complaints. We we'll also get complaints in terms of procurement about an ethical conduct in a certain procurement. Yeah. We we'll get those complaints. We we'll also get complaints about poor quality. Yeah. Of infrastructure. Mm. What is delivered is substandard and the like who get those complaints. Now, when we get any, any type of complaint, we have a system of handling those particular complaints. If you are being complained against, we'll give you an opportunity to respond to the complaint okay. and explain. And then depending on what you, 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 you provide, we can call the two people together and assess the complaint, and then we categorize that complaint. Is it a contractual complaint? which has a contractual remedy. Is it an ethical complaint? Mm. Is it a complaint that is stemmed from capacity? Mm. So if, we, if, if it's contractual, it means we'll handle it contractually. Okay. The contractor has provisions for that. Yeah. If it's ethical, then it results into a disciplinary case. Okay. Somebody will have to be disciplined. If it's a, a capacity issue, then it, it leads to capacity development interventions. So we have all that. And then there are some complaints which later on we refer to other, either law enforcement agencies or yeah. other regulators, mm -hmm. depending on the nature of it. So, for example, if we discover this issue is purely about corruption, mm -hmm. then we refer it to SCB. If we discover this issue is actually criminal, we refer it to the police. So, some people have been arrested, actually. Okay. Some people have been arrested, and um, you know of the cash gate. Yes. The cash gate. Yes. Issue. You know, some because some of those were people in the construction yeah, industry. Yes. The necessary disciplinary processes mm -hmm. took place and okay. they were stricken off okay. of the register. I see. Yes. You seem to be very passionate uh, about this country. You seem to have a clear picture of what needs to be done. You seem to have well connected the roads and infrastructure in your mind. Do you sometimes get worried that things are not being done the way they should be? And what needs to be done? That would be our parting shot tonight. Thank you. What, what needs to be done? This country can be corrected. Yes. This country can, can, can be of international standards. Yes. What, what, what needs to be done? I will finish on that note tonight. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, actually, my view of this country, yes. it can be corrected. And it cannot take long okay. to do that. Okay. So first of all, 
we have to harness the resources, the skill, and the capacity that we have. Once we harness that, you harness your skills and capacity. Yeah. I do the same. Yeah. Then we need to create synergy. Okay. Because in this country, there are certain sectors or certain sections yeah. that are doing the right things. Okay. But whatever I am doing as an individual, or I'm doing, or NCIC is doing as an institution, cannot succeed if the mm -hmm. other section is actually undoing what we are doing. So we need to create You that believe that the other sections that are undoing what others are doing? Yes. Okay. The other, I mean, yeah. Brian, yeah. if we are talking about corruption, yeah. Yeah. what are corrupt people doing? They are basically undoing what you have done. That's right, yeah. They are undoing. Yeah. Now, we need to create synergy. We need to have one vision. Mm. And once we create that synergy, we will create an army. That's right, yeah. We will create an army. Yeah. So, those that are disfavoring this country yeah. will not have a rule. That's right. They come to you, you are saying the same thing. What about if those that are disfavoring this country are in higher positions, they have influence, they have power, they have money. How do we do with that? Do you know because that those that may be disfavoring this country, uh -huh. they are not here, they are up there. You know what? Yes. I don't get worried about something which um, I don't have control over. I see. Because, look, yeah. if all of us are going to sit down because somebody that we think, yeah. because we think, eh? yeah. sometimes it's an illusion yeah. that we think they have power. That's, that's okay. Yeah. It's an illusion. Yeah, it's an illusion. That they have power. That we think they have power. Okay. Okay, sometimes it's an that we, we think somebody that is disfavoring this country mm -hmm. has power. Therefore, we fail even to do the things that we, we can be able to do. Yeah. For me, I believe in doing what I can be able. I have to do the best. That's right. From my point. That's right. Of you. Let me do the best for this country. Mm -hmm. For my grandchildren. That's right. Yeah. So that later on, our children should not laugh at us. Mm -hmm. Our grandchildren mm -hmm. should not laugh at us. Mm -hmm. So it only takes one person. It only takes one person that mm. has started doing the right thing. Mm. And once that thing succeeds, yeah. you remember success has many fathers. Mm. Failure is an offer. That's right. That's right. And Malaga, Sometimes power is just an illusion. an illusion. It's a powerful quote there. Sometimes power is just an illusion. Mm. You know, John Maxwell says you can lead from anywhere. That's right. Yeah. You can lead from the top, you can lead from here. Yeah. So le let's lead from where we are. Everybody should start leading from where they are yeah. and start doing the right things. Engineer Gerard Konje, quite a fascinating discussion we have had. And, Thank you. Uh, yes. um, you have challenged me. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. I hope <laughs> many of us are challenged. <laughs> I hope I, to I hope start I'll... doing the right. Things. That's right. Yeah. One thing I have always said. Yeah. It's very easy to develop Malawi. Yeah. Malawi is a country that has never gone through war. Mm. Malawi is a country that is endowed with the resources. Malawi is a country that is blessed with peace. Mm. Malawi is a country that is endowed with intelligent skillful people who have done wonders outside this country. But maybe sometimes we don't put the right people in the right positions. We need to start putting the right people in the right positions. Engineer Gerard Konje, thank once you. again, thank you very much. Thank you. Profoundly honored to have you tonight. Thank you in so this much. Program. I'm honored. Thank you very much. Well, on that note, we conclude this week's edition of Times Exclusive here on Times Television. In this edition, I was joined by engineer Gerard Konje from National Construction Industry Council. He's the CEO there. My name is Brian Banda from the administrative capital, Lilongwe, thanking you for joining us tonight. This is Times Television, Malawi's number one television. Goodbye from Lilongwe. Yeah.